You're just going to have to spend a million hours mastering to really get this stuff. But uh, I'll walk you through my chain. Um, it's nothing crazy. It's actually really, really simple. And perhaps that's why it sounds so good. So uh, let's take a look. Hopefully you can hear that and it's not echoing in my mic too much. I'm going to cut the volume here and we're just going to look at what's going on. So the very first thing I have is my in EQ, which is where I just make a little bit of adjustments um, if there's something I want to take out of the original track. I'm not boosting here, I'm just like cleaning up. And what I also did is I automated this thing on the intro when I felt like the intro had a little bit too much mids. So I have this thing coming up and that kind of gives us a build in the intro. And there's a little bit, there's another bit of uh, automation later in the track. And this is all happening where I just kind of take this bass scoop and I take a little bit more frequencies out. And this is just stuff I heard on my, um, you know, I just heard in my ears when I was working on the track um, that it'd be a little bit better if we cleaned up these areas. So that happens very first before any of the processing. Then I have my famous, my famous, the famous SSL comp. This is from Waves. And I'm, you can see I'm just using like maybe one, two dB of gain reduction, but really just getting a little bump. And this is what we also uh, call the glue. This is a gluing compressor. So it's basically just taking everything in your track and compressing it just a little bit. And you can see on the chill parts, it basically is doing nothing. Well, it's doing a little pump the whole time. It's like got a nice little movement to it. And I just like this thing. I have the analog switch, which turns to, adds a little bit of noise. So turn that on. Um, then I would usually do a multiband after this, but I didn't use a multiband on this track because I thought your mix was really, really great. Uh, the next thing I did was a uh, additive EQ. So after doing my compression, I added a little bit of frequencies, a little bit of, uh, I'll play this for you because this is, this is my real secret sauce, is a little bit of additive EQ. This is also SSL from Waves. Um, and I will just boost this really high and you'll hear what it sounds like. I like to like sort of dig around in the mids and find like the soul of the track after the compression and bring it out a little bit. Um, so I'll play this chill part. I'm turning it up, you can hear it. So even when it's super boosted, it sounds pretty pleasant. So the idea is to like sweep around. That doesn't sound so good. That doesn't sound so good, you know? So we find the frequency that sounds good. When we turn it way up, it still sounds good. And then we turn it down as much as we can. like 1.7 dB of boost is going into this magic frequency of 1.75. And this 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 kind of mid-range magic frequency is what I do in a lot of my mastering and it's different for every track. It also looks like I'm giving a little courtesy dip at 8K. 8K is a frequency that sometimes can be like kind of piercing. Here, I'll turn it up. Oh no. So I don't know if you heard that, but it got very bright and terrible. So I'm just bringing it down by 0.7 db and i like the curve on this ssl comp if you don't have this compressor this eq you'd find another eq where you just like like general the sound of the thing and i'm not touching the low end at all on the cq i think your low end is great so this is just a little dip at 8k a little boost at 1.75 um then up next what you're probably hearing the most of is this harmonic plug-in by waves 2 it's the abbey road vinyl i've been using this a lot um, I have this TD desk mixing feature on, which is kind of like a combination of compression EQ here. I'll take, you can take a listen. Turn it off. And so what I really like about it is it tightens up the low end and it makes like digital kicks, like kicks produced on DAWs and stuff, sound more realistic to me. Um, it's really a kick fixer, not that there was anything wrong with your kick, but I just find that it makes it makes doll produced tracks like sound really real, this thing. And it's just like a flavor. Um, you know, some people might use isotopic cider or vintage tube. There's all kinds of stuff. I've been using this Abbey Roads vinyl lately and I just really like it. And the TD desk is like sometimes a, some tracks sound great with it, some tracks sound train wrecky with it. So your track I think sounded really, really good, so there's that. And here's the final thing, is that's our mastering uh, limiter. So FabFilter Pro L2 is my favorite. I think everybody's using this stuff and it's... And I'm just shaving a little bit off the top. I am metering on loudness. 
and I'm looking at loudness the short term, I'm and, and I aim for this type of track to be around 10 luffs. And um, that's what we're doing right over here, a little, I usually think of eight as like loud, 10 as in like chill, good normal volume, uh, 12 is like lo-fi and chill stuff, and then like six is EDM. So if we wanted EDM loudness, we could just ruin the song. But now it's very loud. And the presets I like in here, this looks like it was built out of the stock preset, but I really like tonally transparent in the moderate folder, and I like um, wide and open in loud. I also like hip hop in loud. This one looks like, uh, according to my settings, I haven't turned on oversampling. And I haven't turned on peak limiting, which I haven't turned on my dither yet. So I, it looks like I haven't actually made it, made a second pass. But basically I, I, I do all these plugins and every time I add a plugin, I revisit all the others. So like the first thing I do is add a limiter and get the loudness up. Then I add the compressor, you know, then I add the EQ and then I revisit the compressor. Then I added the vinyl and then I re revisit the compressor and the EQ. Then I add the, this one and then I revisit all four of the others. And then just this process of like adding a little bit more processing and then checking all your other processing. Oh, by the time an hour, an hour and a half has gone by, you've updated these plugins each a dozen times and the track's sounding really good. And another important thing is to have multiple uh, listening setups. So I have two sets of speakers and two sets of headphones that are all wired in. So I'll mix on one session, I'll do speakers and one session I'll do headphones and and then on a third session, I'll do like the alternate monitors or something and so on and so forth. And it's all a process of continuously uh, listening to the track and tweaking these plugins. And like, as you can see, you know, there's not a whole lot going on. If I was gonna add multiband, which I don't really think we need, I'll just show you how I do that because it's a very common mastering thing. I would open up FabFilter Pro M. Just, I hope this is still recording. Thick. Um, and I like these two basic four band presets. So um, they both come really compressed. And uh, let's use just one right now. What I like to do is select all, throw my threshold back. So you just see the line sort of bumping around. Maybe need to like come down a little bit more manually on this one. Then I like to sort of bring these guys down closer to like not having any gain. Then we listen to the track and we decide, hey, if we want, if this track actually needs more low mids, let's let's put it up. Or if it's got too much highs or needs more. If it's a lo-fi beat, I would really compress the highs since it's like a house track, I'm actually gonna not touch them very much at all. And uh, I'll turn off the thing so you can just hear what it sounds like tweaking it around. Man, now I wanna add, now I wanna add multi-band to this chain. So if I were to continue working on the song, and I'm like my speakers on, I, I'm not in the mastering headset right now. Um, now I would revisit my SSL comp and make sure it's the bump and still good with the Pro MB. Maybe I put the Pro MB before the, the the bus compression, see how that sounds. Take a look at the Abbey Road, are we clipping? No. Take a look at the master limiter, is the loudness still good? It's pretty good, it actually looks like the compression made it a little quieter, so we push it up a little bit. Now that it's limiting more, does the compression still sound good? Actually, maybe this is getting crushed too much. And so this constant, just this state of going between the plugins and tweaking them the tiniest bit and this kind of stuff, it's gonna be like 0.1 dB, 0.2 dB is gonna make a noticeable difference. So it's just about taking the time and going through, listening to the track and making it as best you can. I work on master for maybe about 45 minutes to an hour at a time. And so then after I'm done, I say, okay, great. Bounce it out. And, um, yeah, and it's just the process of rinse and repeating. I mean, most of my masters, when I'm working on a master for a track, I would say, I would say maybe two weeks is how long I comfortably work on each song gets about two weeks. And that doesn't mean I'm logging 80 hours per song, but it means that I am 
working on it multiple times over the stretch of like 10, 14, sometimes 20 days. Um, because after making a bunch of mastering edits like we've just done, psychologically the track is in a new state because you're paying attention to all these little details and thus you lose some objectivity. So you just gotta give it some time. That's why um, I'm gonna bounce this out. I'm gonna listen to it on my phone. I'm gonna think about, is that multiband a good idea? Looks like I have notes for myself here too. Multiband. Um, so yeah, that's the process. I hope that, I hope this made sense. You know, let me know if you have any questions. Um, but that's basically how I do mastering.